Welcome to History 111, Lecture 8, The Great Awakening. While most colonies had established churches, by 1700 the civil and ecclesiastical authorities had a really difficult time enforcing their authority. Denominationalism, or the spread of competing churches, really takes off in the 18th century within the colonies. And you see Baptists, Methodists, Moravians, Reformists, Lutherans, and so on, all competing with established churches for members. Around the same time begins a movement called the Great Awakening, and that's a transatlantic religious revival, and it's going to first touch the medical colonies in the 1730s. And really important of that is a man named George Whitfield, and he's really going to be the catalyst for this in the Americas. And he's an English preacher who's going to go on a tour and go out with tent revivals and play on the feelings of his audience, and he's going to bring a lot of religious emotionalism throughout the middle colonies. Whereas in New England, this is going to be led by a man named Jonathan Edwards, who's going to stress personal conversion experiences, and you really should look at a document called Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God, that gives a very strong sense of what Edwards is preaching. The Great Awakening in general is characterized by religious emotionalism, fire and brimstone sermons, and again, look at the Jonathan Edwards for that, and individual religious experiences. These are revival meetings, are often intense or open fields, and that's going to take formality and class structure away, and those are kind of key things in the established churches. And within the Great Awakening, there's an acceptance of, and even sometimes a preference for, untrained, uneducated clergy. This is a real democratization of religion, where people are saying, hey, we want access to spirituality without having to go through these formal channels. And one thing to understand is, at this time in America, there is a shortage of trained clergy, so a lot of people weren't receiving the religious services they were demanding, and the Great Awakening really hit that target audience. Now, in the South, however, the appeal of the Great Awakening was as much a reaction against the Anglican hierarchy. In the South, it's not as much about getting access to religion. It's about the lower classes really going against the religion of the upper classes. It's more of a class struggle there. And Methodists, Baptists, Presbyterians are all going to benefit as the Anglican hierarchy, those elites within the colony, are going to lose control over religion. So what's the big idea here? Well, first and foremost, this is the transatlantic movement that the colonies are participating in. And more than that, the Great Awakening is something really significant in American history. It does a lot of important things you need to know. First and foremost, it causes divisions within American Protestantism. And it's going to break down the idea of one major church for each colony. And it's going to be something that's kind of central to religious freedom we'll talk about later. In addition, it empowers women. Many of the people organizing and bringing together these big tent meetings, the, the kind of key recruiters are often women who are going to bring in people and really take on a role. And it's also going to introduce revivalism into American religion and it's going to stress egalitarianism and eventually the Great Awakening is going to start increasingly influencing political behavior. See you in the next lecture.